they always said I'm wrong But what they doing today? I think they want me gone But I ain't going away They told me I was wrong But look at my ass Yo guys, what's going on? I'm Tim. This is The Real Sports Talk. Thank you for tuning in. The Toronto Blue Jays are just having probably the best week in their franchise's history in terms of bringing in players. In one week, they already acquired Jose Reyes, Josh Johnson, Mark Burley, Emilio Bonifacio, John Buck, they acquired all them from the malls. That trade's still pending. Review from Bud Selig. And quite honestly, I don't know what the hell is taking him so long. But you had that deal get done. And then today, they went on a limb. They made a decision to sign Melky Cabrera, who over the past two seasons in August, if you, if you take through last season when he was with the Royals, and then this season the, through August before he got suspended for a performance-enhancing drug suspension, Melky Cabrera had been the best hitter in baseball, or ha had the most hits in baseball in that period of time. He had won the All-Star Game MVP, and then the suspension. And look, I, I don't know exactly if Melky Cabrera is going to be the same guy now that he's had this suspension, because we know that when he was with the Yankees, he was a chunky fourth outfielder. When he was with the Braves, he wasn't successful, and then all of a sudden, he was with the Royals, and he had a great season. I was shocked that he was able to duplicate that again this year. I thought it was almost a one-year wonder type thing. It wasn't. And then it, it pretty much came out of nowhere. And uh, it's, it was either, yeah, it was a couple days after the trade deadline that Melky Cabrera tested positive for uh some, uh, I think it was high testosterone levels, which basically means that he was using some type of performance-enhancing drug, and that he was going to be suspended for the rest of the season and for the first five games of the playoffs, which meant the NLDS if the Giants made it there. Obviously, they did, and they did not put him back on the roster when he went. Uh, when he was even eligible to be back on the roster, and they ended up winning the World Series anyway. So it was pretty much a guarantee Melky Cabrera was not coming back to the Giants. They had acquired Hunter Pence. Gregor Blanco had shown the type of glut that he has in left field. And quite honestly, to bring him back there, it would have taken a lot more than the two years, $16 million that he ended up signing for with the Blue Jays. Before the suspension, we were talking about him getting a five-year deal between 60 and $80 million. I know that's kind of vague, but it really depended what the market said. And it, Quite honestly, $100 million, the standard that that once meant, it really doesn't mean quite as much anymore. We see four or five guys now with $200 million contracts. A lot more players are signing deals for five years, $120 million when it used to be five years, $80 or $90 million. So it doesn't mean as much if he would have got that type of deal. But obviously the Giants were going to give him that after suspension and after they were able to go on and win the World Series. And in the end, they were going to have to choose between him and Hunter Pence. And Hunter Pence might not have had a great playoffs, but he had a few key hits especially in Game 7 of the NLDS where he had the broken bat single, NLCS I should say, and then he was able to kind of become a leader in that clubhouse. So they decided to stick with Hunter Pence. They like Gregor Blanco's defense in left field, which left him out there. And early in the free agency market, the Toronto Blue Jays, a team that's kind of been knocking on the door for the last four or five seasons, and then the Rays and the Orioles have had their time where they've come up and they've made the playoffs, and I think uh, Alex Anthopoulos and the Toronto Blue Jays decided that this was going to be the offseason that they were really went for it. I don't know if they're done yet, but man, have they made some good moves so far this offseason. They've been able to make that huge trade. They've made this one, which I guess if Melky Cabrera goes back to being what he used to be, which I, I don't expect. I don't know what he's going to be. He's probably not going to be as good as he was the last two years. But I, I would find it hard to believe that the testosterone was the only thing that was making him better. I tend to think he changed up his swing a little bit and he became a better overall player and that the performance-enhancing drugs certainly weren't hurting. But at the same time, I, maybe he wasn't using them when he was with the Royals because... I know that there's designer steroids and designer things that can get through the system that allow you to cheat and not get caught, but if he did end up getting caught, then he wasn't using the right thing, so maybe he was doing a clean, maybe he just decided middle of the summer, whenever, early in this season, that he was going to start using them. We don't know that.
And we don't know what Melky Cabrera is going to be. But if he's even close to what he was, two years, $16 million is an absolute steal by the Blue Jays. This is a great pickup. And I don't know exactly off the top of my head. i, I got to sit down before the season and really analyze this. But, man, the Blue Jays, I think, right now are the second-best team in that division if things go right. And I know that's saying a lot, but things for the Orioles, I, I find it really hard to believe that things could go as perfect as they did for the Orioles last year, where they win every extra inning game and everything. The Rays are going to be a good team. The Red Sox, we really don't know what they're going to be. Um, ben Sherrington says they're going to spend money there this offseason. But I find it tough to believe that they're going to just all of a sudden trade Adrian Gonzalez, Carl Crawford, all the big deals they have, and then they're just going to go refill that, stock up some other big contracts when there really isn't one guy out there this offseason that is a, you got to have that type of guy on your team. There, there really isn't that type of guy out there, and I don't know if the Red Sox are going to build their team that way anyway. So we don't know what they're going to be. And look, the Yankees are going to be good. CC Sabathia is coming off a rough season. He'll bounce back. But the lineup we know is getting older, and it's really it's a power lineup, and power lineups are not built to win in the playoffs. That being said, well, it's pretty much a lock to me that they'll probably get to the playoffs, but who knows? The Blue Jays, let me go over the lineup that they currently have. In left field, you have Melky Cabrera, really good outfield. you got Colby Rasmus. Really good young center fielder who they got from the St. Louis Cardinals. Jose Bautista, who before this season had, or the last two seasons prior to this, 2010 and 2011, led the MLB in home runs both of those years. And, and then you have Emilio Bonifacio, who's a great fourth outfielder who brings a ton of speed. At third, you're going to have Brett Lowry. Very good young third baseman. I expected a little bit more out of him this year, but he still had a solid season, and I would expect a breakout year out of him next year. Jose Reyes, say what you want about him. He's a he's going to steal you 60 bases. He's a solid fielder. fielder. He's not going to hit for a ton of power, but uh, with, with uh, the base stealing, and he's going to get on base, he's going to hit probably close to two, 300. The only thing I would be concerned about with him there is just Toronto, obviously, I believe, is the only field that still has AstroTurf in the Sky Dome, Rogers Center, whatever they're calling it this week. I would be concerned about him adjusting to playing on turf. Turf is not fun to play on if you've never played on turf. I mean, I've never played baseball on it, but I've played soccer on it, and it's not fun diving on turf. That being said, you're wearing long pants, but you're not wearing long sleeves, and the ball on in the Sky Dome just takes the weirdest hops it always has. So that's going to be an adjustment period. Adani H. Trevara at second base is a. He's not going to provide that probably a ton with the bat, but they have a very good lineup already. And the thing about adding Melky Cabrera is you have two guys with power in Bautista and Encarnacion, who's at first base, who actually led the team in home runs this year. Now, I, I'm not 100% sure that he's going to come back and hit 40 plus home runs again next year, but. He's going to bring a lot of power to this team. He had 42 last year, coming off a season the year before where he had 17. You know, I, I think that something about going to the Blue Jays has really worked for him. He, it's not like he, yeah, I mean, 2008, he had almost 30 home runs. He's had seasons where he's put it together. The potential's always been there with him. But H. Chavara is not going to bring a great bat, but what he does bring is a great glove. He's a shortstop who they're likely going to have playing second base. So, H. Chavar is going to bring a great glove, and you can't discount what that means to a team. At catcher, they're very crowded. At least one of these guys will be gone. J.P. Aaron Sebia will bring you a decent glove, a a lot of or a decent amount of power for a catcher, but not a high batting average. Wouldn't be shocked if he's gone. They have Jeff Mathis there, who's a backup catcher. John Buck, who had one all-star season when he was with the Blue Jays the first time. In the end... Uh, on a real good team, he's probably a backup catcher. And Travis Denard probably won't start the season with the team, but he is a top prospect who they got in the Roy Halladay trade with the Philadelphia Phillies. And they anticipate that he is going to be their starter probably by 2013. And I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, shit, next year is 2013. By 2014, I wouldn't be surprised if he is their starting catcher. And I wouldn't be surprised even by the end of 2013 if he's their starting catcher because he has a chance to come up and be one of those impact rookies late in the season. Then you look at their rotation. You have Ricky Romero is a very good starter. Probably had to shoulder too much of the load. But that won't be the case this year if Josh Johnson can stay healthy. Because if he can stay healthy, he's a top 10 pitcher in this league. Mark Burley is going to be a very solid.
solid number three for this team. I don't think Mark Burrell is an ace. I've never looked at him like that, but he's going to give you a solid amount of innings and an ERA somewhere in the threes. You like that a lot. Brendan Morrow had a pretty solid season this year. He had trouble staying healthy, only made 21 starts, but Morrow has just certain games where Brandon Morrow is just able to come out and absolutely light it up. He, you'll, you'll see a game or two every season where he's close to throwing a no-hitter. He's streaky, but he's always had a ton of potential, whether it was with the Mariners or here. And then they have Jay Happ, who had pretty much one good year early on in his career, has struggled to get back to that point. My guess is that they'll go out and get another fifth starter if they're really going for it, but we don't know. In the bullpen, they have the ageless Darren Oliver, who is... I'm assuming he's coming back. I don't know if that's a, a lock. Yeah, Brad Lincoln, who they got from the Pirates at the trade deadline. Sergio Santos struggled in the appearances he had. They got him from the Chicago White Sox. He struggled in the appearances he had and then was injured. They expect that Sergio Santos will be good to go for spring training. And then Casey Jansen had a solid season as their closer, save 22 of 25. So you, you listen to this lineup. It sounds like a playoff lineup. you got to remember you're in the AL East, but adding Melky Cabrarian has certainly helped the Toronto Blue Jays become a team that right now, if I had a gun to my head, I would probably say makes the playoffs next year. Blue Jays fans, there are a lot of Blue Jays fans out there. A lot of Toronto guys watch this show, and they've asked me the last few years, are the Blue Jays close to making the playoffs? And I said, it, it always seems like we're waiting for them to make uh, just one more move to put them over the top. Or uh, I anticipate picking them the next year, and then uh, the Red Sox come out and make a good move. The Rays do something that I expect them to win. The Orioles come out of nowhere. Next year, the Blue Jays should be a playoff team. And I can say that right now, and maybe I'll change my mind in February or March when we're doing our 30 clubs in 30 days predictions. But if not, man, the Blue Jays look good on paper. That's all assuming Bud Selig approves this trade. I would expect he does. And the Toronto Blue Jays are a serious contender. Follow me on Twitter at Cash Kelly underscore TRST, K A S H Kelly underscore TRST. Like the Real Sports Talk on Facebook, Facebook.com slash The Real Sports Talk. And uh, I'll see you guys later. Just a little bit around the corner from fear.